You know, if there's one thing that runs deep in these old hills, through these caves, what keeps the creeks flowing? Moonshine. Prohibition. Prohibition in the United States was a constitutional ban on importing, making, hauling, selling any kind of alcoholic beverages in the 1920s and early 30s. Now this is what they called the Noble Experiment. It was done in hopes to reduce crime, corruption, and solve a lot of social problems like people getting drunk, biting in bars, out in the streets, and things like that. And in hopes to help the tax burden created by prisons, poor houses, and improve hygiene in America. But, just like everything else, people always find a way. But now there was a lot of supporters of this act, like uh, churches, and, you know, a lot of things like that. And I'm guessing there was many, many housewives that was behind that. Because like I've always said, Behind every good man, there's a good woman pretending to let him be the boss and let him think he knows what he's doing. <laughs> but you also got to stop and look at it this way, too. This was also during a time called the Great Depression. The Great Depression began as a recession in summer of 1929. But it just got worse and worse. Many, many people struggled. People couldn't work. It's hard to feed their families. There was a whole lot of people that sadly starved to death during this Great Depression. During the Depression, they had these stamps. They had, like a voucher. And I don't care if you had a fistful of money. You couldn't buy nothing without them stamps. A voucher. And you could only get what it allowed you to get. Many a time. Folks wouldn't have survived this Great Depression without the help of family, friends, you know, just kin and neighbors, sharing what little they did have with one another. I remember hearing my grandparents talk about it. They said if it weren't for the community and just people opening up their hearts. They never would have made it through. But that's a story for another day. But when all this happened at Prohibition, there was little places you could go to. Like uh, places like speakeasies, which was like little nightclubs and things like that. Yeah, that sold alcohol illegally. But now you think, all right, well, where did they get it? Well, in walked the moonshiners. Now moonshine, white lightning, goes by many names in these hills. But it's something and a craft that these old mountain folks in the Appalachians have mastered. corn liquor 
tater liquor. There's all kinds. Some of it made better than others, things like that. But it all pretty much had the same effect. Now what these old timers would do is they'd get, uh, they'd get them a steal, like this in here. They'd take it way back in the mountains. It'd be hard for the revenueers, the G-men, to get to. And my grandpa was an old moonshiner himself, and they'd have to slip around, sneak around, to sell it, deliver it. First one thing is another. So a lot of them take these old cars, and they'd make like a hidden compartments, things like that. And there has been a few times where they'd run out of fuel. They'd run out of gas. And them old car cars nowadays wouldn't do it probably, but you now them old cars run off carburetors and stuff. They'd run off that moonshine. It was that combustible. But they'd take them old cars and they'd soup them up where they would fly. And that's actually where the NASCAR sport came from, how it originated. But these old timers, like I said, and some of the younger folks too, they'd go way, way back in them old hills and set up their stills. They'd have lookouts and stuff. And usually it'd be close to around a creek running water. My grandpa himself told me a story once where he, you know, them old old folks back in had to do what they had to do to feed their families and their kin, so he said he set him up a little still once. Knew all about it, how to make it, run it, things like that. Well, he had this old truck, and it was just, it was just down an old back road. Now what he'd do is my grandma and one of the youngins sat out there and he had the hood up. And they acting like they're having trouble. He'd do something to one of the water somewhere it wouldn't crank. Well, while he was off down there running that liquor, my granny would sit there in the vehicle and let the youngins play around. And if anybody started to stop, off them for help, they was to say they already had help on the way. But also, if it was a revenue or, a, you know, police officer, anybody like that, she was to blow the horn and pretend like, you know, the youngins was playing around there and beat it. But these old moonshiners, they took pride in their shine now. There were some that was legendary, like Popcorn Sutton. I remember hearing tales my grandpa told of uh, when he was a younger like feller. To him and his brother, one of his brothers, helped Popcorn make two or three batches. Said he was a good old boy. Said he tickled you to death, especially when he got to drinking. But said he didn't put up with no bull either. Said he was serious about his liquor. I reckon them old timers, you know, they they probably forgot more than I'll ever learn. Especially when it comes to things like that. Why? Wow. It's still being done today. Which now most of the time you can go to your local liquor store or something like that and go right in there and buy some. Well, like I said, back in times was different. Yeah, that old Mountain Dew was made just about everywhere here in the hills. But 
Like I said, it had a bunch of names. A lot of people call it White Lightning, Old Lightning Jack, Mule Kick, Painter Piss. I mean, just, they had all kinds of names for it. But the thing was, a lot of folks try to cut it different ways with different things and make it stronger. And when that happens, it could actually cause people to go blind. I mean, it really could. But now I reckon the very first legal moonshine distillery was Piedmont Distillers in North Carolina. But even to this day, we back in these old hills, back behind the fog and the mist. There's still a few stills out there. A burning up old Mountain Dew. Well, folks, this ain't a long one, but it's one I hope you enjoyed, and I just wanted to share it with you. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. I got a whole lot more of these old stories and stuff that I'll be sharing. If you're new, please subscribe. Tell all your friends and family. That'll help me out a whole lot, too. I sure do appreciate you. But as always, I love you bunches. God bless. And we'll see you on the next round.